sense that uh, can be here that the talk was accepted. So I will not say the word, but I will speak about uh, how to uh, how my um, solution program for finite element for the part for partial differential equations, finite element with the finite element method. Uh, which is around for quite a long time, even if I did not really work too much on it for the last uh, 10 years or so. Um, in the recent, in the last, last one or two years, we have made an effort of parallelizing it and we've got quite good results, which I would like to report on here. So, the contents of my talk. So that's um, uh, so you see that it is um, unfortunately not completely perfect, so the transparencies are not, not going so well. Oh, but okay, it will uh, nevertheless it will work. So um, the contents it will be so I have here an audience which probably is not an expert in partial differential equations. Uh, you probably have heard about, about finite element method, but not, do not know too much about it, so I will talk a little bit about it. And I will briefly give an um, introduction of what Catalyst is uh, and what are the characteristics of it. And then I will describe how we progressed uh, to the past. And, and we, the, what we, what we did was to work on a model problem and really looking at how the performance was on this model problem and then describe how we reached a performance which I consider to be quite well. And then last, uh, I will give an outlook what still could be done. Okay, so um, motivation for partial differential equations. What are partial differential equations? So. These are uh, mm, type of equations which are encountered very often in applications because and there is a fundamental reason for it, that, which is that phenomena which are characterized by instantaneous and short range interactions in a continuum, um, they can be modeled with partial differential equations. And that's almost all fundamental equations. So that's uh, like. For example, how some medium behaves, so for example, Maxwell equations, um, the equations of quantum mechanics, the flow equations, and um, fluid mechanics, that's, that's all um, can be described by partial differential equations. If they have more complex systems like cells or so, or the human brain or so, then of course these, uh, these models are not, not uh, really adequate in this uh, thing. And, as the, talk, the, the speaker before said, um, uh, that, uh, the, that that may be not be the right choice thing to do, even if people are doing it. So applications abound in all uh, domains of uh, method of, of um, natural sciences uh, and physical sciences and engineering disciplines. Okay, briefly, what is a Partial differential equation PDE, short PDE, is an equation for an unknown function u, which is defined on some domain omega. Omega is nice, big, simple for the domain, um, which can be, which is in at, at least uh, two-dimensional Euclidean space, often in a three or four-dimensional uh, Euclidean space. And this equation is posed on every point of this domain. So this x and y here, these are points in this omega. So in every point of the domain, we have an equation. And this equation, that's the, the, the main differential equation, it involves also derivatives of the function. Yeah. So and partial derivatives is, okay, I have two variables, x and y, these two variables, maybe three or four, and the function depends on these all variables, and the derivatives are also with respect to all these variables. variables. So, for more than one variable, derivatives occur. 
So an example is this diffusion equation or heat transport, uh, so heat transport equation, Stokes equation that is a flow equation. You can have non-linearities here. If you include some non-linearity here, you get the Navier-Stokes equation, which is basic of the basis of most fluid dynamics um, calculations nowadays. And short remark, this uh, what is not a PDE but an ordinary differential equation, ODE, is this thing here down there. So this is the form in which you could put this complicated differential equation, one page differential equation, on the last um, uh, from the last talk, and would be simply this uh, this abbreviated form. Um, the, the difficulties when solving PDEs are the following. Um, the solution is, is a function defined on a continuum, and you will need often a very large number of unknowns for approximating it well. Yeah, this is, uh, this is quite, quite a lot worse than for this automobile differential equation. So you have also a continuum of time values. Yeah, so in principle, you would need um, infinitely many points also there, but in the partial differential equations here, so you usually have a curse of dimensions, which means that you, if you, you have to define an effort, you have to make a mesh in every dimension, which is of a certain fineness, and it's, this is a lot more work than the ordinary differential equations. And then, um, existence, uniqueness, and behavior, regularity, how good is the solution? Um, that is often a difficult, um, in a lot of cases, even an unsolved problems, still nowadays. So this is a domain which is not completely, which, which you have not mathematically completely in the hand, and which leads also to the point that the discretized equation may be ill-conditioned, so the solution may be ill-conditioned and may be difficult to solve. And Already the definition of the problem can be non trivial So there's a whole industry, for example, for um, really treating complex, uh, complex mechanical structures, simply describing the ge geometries of these structures. Okay, um, the finite element method is one of the um, most successful methods in this, uh, for solving these equations. Um, I think it can, can be said that most, most part of this industry is now, nowadays working with finite element methods. And, um, or, and uh, okay, only very briefly, so what is the, the fundamental properties there? That is that they start from a mathematically sound, relatively sound uh, theoretical point that they start from the variational form of the equations and you search for the solution in some infinite dimensional function space. Of course, if it's infinite dimensional, we cannot really calculate with that. So the idea of FAM is approximate this infinite dimension, infinite dimensional function space with a discrete function space, um, which is made from piecewise polynomial functions defined by the mesh. So, Still some chalk, maybe. So, green. So, some, some mesh. Maybe quite a little bit, of maybe cubes, whatever. And you have on each of these cells, you have a piecewise polynomial. And you can re require, for example, that these polynomials are continuous across this border. So in total, you have a continuous function, but it's piecewise polynomial. Of course, it can be described then with a finite number of degrees of freedom. And we are, I, I then in a, in a setting where we can really solve, solve something in, in computer approximate solution. Okay, flexibility, it's very flexible. So I can also um, use maybe triangles for, um, for uh, approximating such a domain. I can use combination of triangles. I can map these 
cells, um, these cells, these basic cells of the mesh, I can map these precisely to the domain, which gives a lot of, lot, lot of freedom in approximating, which makes the whole task not, not trivial, but in the, the results are very, are very good. So good theoretical foundation and flexibility are the advantages of that here. And feminist is a common list FEM framework, which has a lot of buzzwords uh, in, in which it can do in principle and um, which, which work, and, um, which, but of course it's not the only program for solving PPEs. It's still probably the only one written in common list. Or, uh, I don't know, probably not, but. Uh, uh, probably the project which is, uh, which is most known. Okay, uh, it has a large flexibility also with respect to equations that can solve them. Okay, so this is the first part, the PDEs, so, so you know in which um, setting we are, and now for the description of this uh, 3D linear elasticity, so we take we do the 3D applications because applications um, in practice are often 3D, um, which are uh, so um, that's the one thing, and then 3D is much more difficult than 2D. So there's a step from ordering the differential equation, a difficult difficulty step, which is 2D partial differential equation, and then 3D is, e, is then again um, one step. Uh, more difficult, and so we took um, 3D linear elasticity, and we considered something like uh, a plate with holes. So the 2D, 2D picture of this situation would be, which we, uh, which we would consider, is something like a plate with holes, but only you have to think, okay, these pictures are also there in 3D, but, um, but then I want to have, want to compute the uh, effective the behavior of such a plate with holes. Yeah. So you can imagine it behaves different um, if you have a plate without holes, if, and if you pull and so it behaves different than if you have such a medium. And um, okay, so how the, and this effective behavior can be computed by um, computing an effective elasticity tensor, which is computed by such a formula, uh, which is an average over some calculations done over such a representative cell. So you take one representative cell and subject this cell to different stress behave, behaviors and, so, and, and then you calculate a response and this response is um, contained in these corrector functions n which are solutions of a partial differential equation here. Yeah. And these responses are then taken into account when averaging this behavior of the, uh, of the, of the medium. Yeah, so this, that is the um, that is the, the thing. And okay, what you will see is that you get quite a lot of um, of react of uh, responses. This is e the dimension, which is two in this case here, and three in the case which we take as an example. So here we have eight eight responses. And for d is equal to 3, we have even 27 responses to this, um, to this stress. Okay, so the state of feminist for the years 20, 2005 2000 to 2015 was about that, that we could, that I could really solve the 2D problem to an extremely high accuracy, quite well. Um, Reason and reasonably fast um, in about this 600 seconds for getting this 10 digit accuracy. So, quite still acceptable. So, um, but the 2 3D case was completely un 
completely tractable, untreatable for me, or not, not completely, so we get some accuracy, but it really takes a long time. It has a lot of unknowns, 200,000, and this was not able to do it on the machines which I had at that time. And therefore, this, this problem was a good, um, uh, good task to, um, to, to, do, to, to tackle um, for making things perform. Okay, so what, how do we, what should we do when we increase, when we want to increase performance? And there is a systematic approach which looks like the following. So first, one should check if one does the right thing. If one, uh, one can, um, so that's the point where often the most benefits are achieved. So you can very easily make a bad algorithm. Uh, you can make it perform perfectly, but if it's a bad algorithm, then the accuracy which you achieve by this thing or the, con the convergence is, is simply, it will, it will not, uh, it, it is not, no, not really a good purpose. Then you should check if you can maybe use high performance libraries, and there are polynomial algebra, which is an important problem in this domain. Important sub problem, there are good um, high performance libraries, so that's also the point where you can gain something. Then you should make, uh, before you start analyzing, you should um, optimize the, your serial code. So because it's simpler you, um, and you can uh, get around some bottlenecks, then it's probably the right thing to do a shared memory parallelization with operating system threads. So you get at least perfect performance on on one one meshing. And then the last part which gives them the most benefits and open ups, opens up opens uh, up the doors to really large applications is distributed memory parallelization. Okay, so the first thing, so we go through these points. So using libraries and a choice of the algorithm, so what I observed um, then was that I indeed did not use the class and libraries, so um, I had somehow they, they were not weren't switched on, um, and okay, when I used those, then I got a factor of two, which le leads to the results I, uh, I showed before, I've shown before. And then I saw that the calculations, um, they were done in the course of my habilitation thesis, where I examined a special smoother, which was robust, which had a good properties uh, with respect to going to higher approximation higher degrees of polynomial approximation on these cells. So it was quite quite nice. So that was theoretically a reasonable result, but it was much more costly in 3D. And so when I stepped back then and used a much simpler uh, algorithm, then I got even faster results in 3D. So I'm down here at 165 seconds instead of 2700, which I had. I had before, and then, okay, if I make, then I look, say, okay, this very simple thing is maybe not the best for parallelizing, but there are um, some other, so what was an other, other method which is very well known for good parallelization properties, and then I even get a little bit, a little more, uh, a little better. So we are now at 114 seconds instead of this 2700. Okay. So that's uh, the first step that was the one who probably gave most. Then, improvement of the serial code. Their profiling is the thing you have to do in every case. And then I want to remind of this very well known quote of Paul Bayern. In this, it is easy to write fast code. Unfortunately, it is very easy to write slow code. And so um, that proved the case also here, uh, because when profiling showed them two, two points, 
So this was one of those uh, that was the most important one. So I really updated my global stiffness matrix. Um, I updated it uh, element by element via a generic function. So really double value for the double value. And this is um, this was uh, this was quite took took a lot of time then. And um, when I switch then to blockwise updates, so here for each such a cell, you have a whole block of unknowns which you which corresponds to some block in the stiffness matrix. Then this performance bottleneck was gone, and we got uh, we are down here now. From um, at this point, we had 114 or something. Uh, so we are not down here at 47. So maybe here we can add another level and are now here at 378. And after this step, profiling did not show easily removable bottlenecks, so we stopped at this point. Uh, there was another, maybe also interesting bottleneck, which was that I allocated that I had a more functional approach at that point, which uh, amounted to allocating local matrices um, during assembly, which were then thrown away, um, and I replaced them also by a pool using the pool, uh, by reusing them, and that, that meant also, uh, was also a technique which made it faster. Then, shared memory parallelization, so that, um, was a, some little bit problematic because you have to make uh, you when calculating the defect on such um, on such a mesh assembling the, the defect that you to combine the local assembly results you have to take care that um, that different that contributions from different cells do not interfere with each other on, along these boundaries. So this is not completely easy, um, but then um, if you if you make this, then you can uh, can get a little, little bit faster. So this is still on a laptop. Um, the two threads more does not pay off here on this laptop. It's, it's too coarse, and um, so then we so we have here then a little little better results than before. And if you, if I go on a workstation, now it's maybe time to leave the laptop, then we can have more memory and, uh, and, and can do a little more calculations. This is an older workstation, but it has 250 mega, uh, gigabytes of memory. So then we see, okay, we get some, using this operating system threads, we get for six of OS threads on one socket, we get a speed up of factor of three, and we get on this old workstation, which is slower than the processors of the laptop. Okay, we, we, so we get um, then real results which are comparable with the laptop, but again, one level more. So here, 2,400 seconds for, but for much more unknowns. So this is 12 million unknowns, and the matrix is one, uh, one billion. Uh, Okay, and then the last thing is distributed memory parallelization, and there um, I use the CLM by MPI, which was written by Marco, and I control it using L farm from James Lawrence, and um, the library which we put upon CLM MPI was is called dynamic distributed objects, which allows the creation, the removal and changes for these distributed objects. So we make a domain decomposition, so we decompose, uh, we decompose the domain in several disjoint parts. And on the interfaces, these interfaces are consist of dis distributed objects and synchronization of those are um, the data changes are communicated to other to other uh, processes and the result of this um, leads them to, uh, to the following results. So we are from 2,400 seconds here with three MPI workers from these workstations. We are at 800 seconds, so almost perfect, three, uh, perfect speed up. And then on going on a cluster, then we are 
instead of these 2,000 400 we are at, or it, it is 800 seconds, we are at 50 seconds, and oh. so current work, we can think about may, making this even faster and more accurate, so there are some ideas of this, EDO, our distributed objects, likely could make, be made that parallel, so this is not really a bottleneck at the moment, but it could prove under some circumstances to be a bottleneck. Then we could think about doing load balancing, which is reasonable for adaptive calculations. And then um, at the moment we are working on some, solving some benchmark flow problems, uh, driven cavity flow around the cylinder. And we want to do an interactive demonstration uh, in September at, an, uh, at the long night of sciences, which is something in Erlangen, which the Erlangen University uh, does every year. So we we'll make inter interactive demo, people uh, people drawing some profile of an airplane and we compute, we want to compute the track, the track and lift of this thing. And um, then some research I would like to go to something called multi scale final day. So thank you for the attention. Thank you again to both speakers. <laughs> so, maybe one, one addition. So it's 
still be available and downloaded and fed this form, but not at the moment. Yeah, at the moment it's fine. Then it's fine. Then it's fine. Then it's fine. That's not good. And it's at Savannah. So the Git repository is hosted at Savannah and one of you non blue talk. So you can access it like that. Okay, I'm looking at the